Hey there, I'm going to walk you through uh, the coloring and labeling of the periodic table activity. So this um, first slide is just our objectives on what we need um, to be able to do and understand using our periodic table, the elements. Um, you will not be expected to memorize the periodic table. Okay, I'll repeat that. I do not expect you to memorize the periodic table, the elements. You will always be given a periodic table. Now, with that being said, we do need to make sure we understand the placement of the elements within the periodic table and what the placement means as far as their structure um, and their reactivity. So we should be able to use and interpret an element's location um, of the periodic table to answer questions about its structure. So it's atomic structure, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we also need to, be, need to be able to identify elements given a description by applying knowledge of the periodic table. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's, we're going to go over a couple of vocabulary terms. The first one are groups. So a group is a vertical column on the periodic table that indicates the number of valence electrons that an atom has. So remember, a vertical column, a column goes up and down right, up and down, top to bottom, um, and that tells us how many valence electrons, basically how many electrons can be shared um, or lost or um, taken in an element. So those are our groups. And a period is a horizontal row on the periodic table that tells us the number of energy levels that an atom has in its electron cloud. We'll talk more about um, energy levels and electron clouds in the next section when we take a look at Bohr models. But remember, a horizontal row, okay, a row goes from left to right. So let's take a look at our periodic table. So your periodic table should look just like mine. I have labeled right the period right over here. right. So I wrote the word period, and I have an arrow pointing here to this first period. And then I have the word group down here with an arrow pointing to this first group. So you need to label your periodic table just like mine. Okay, so period, um, right, are the horizontal rows and our group, vertical columns. So we are going to list the name and any special characteristics for our groups on the periodic table. And there are 18 groups. So I'm just going to click through all of these so they're here on the screen for you. Yeah. So group one, we're going to label as alkali metals. Um, they are the most reactive metals. Um, in that group, in group one, um, that um, right column, hydrogen is not an alkali metal. Um, it is actually a non-metal. Um, group two, we're going to label as alkaline earth metals. Group three are your rare earth metals. Um, and then um, groups 3 through 12 are going to be your transition metals. So that's going to be the biggest chunk. Uh, the next to last group or column are your halogens. And then group 18 are your noble gases. So when you go to label your periodic table, it will look like this. So you have alkaline metals right, labeled here for number one. Alkaline earth metals labeled here for group two. You have your rare earth metals here um, for group three. And then transition metals stretches from group three all the way over here to group 12. So this whole section are your transition metals. And then we pick back over here at our um, halogen group and then noble gases. So if you need to pause, go ahead and make sure your table um, your periodic table looks exactly like mine, okay? So the next thing we need to do is create a key. So in the bottom left corner of your periodic table, you're going to create a key for the three different parts of the periodic table. So your metals, we are going to use a light blue um, colored pencil. Please don't use a marker um, because we do need to be able to still read the periodic table. And if your marker is too um, strong and it completely like blacks out the words, we won't be able to actually read the periodic table. So we're going to use colored pencils or crayons. 
So your metals are going to be light blue, your non-metals are going to be purple, and the metalloids are going to be orange. So I apologize, I clicked a little soon. But basically, this is what your uh, key will look like, right? Just right down here in the bottom left-hand corner, using your colored pencils, create like a light blue square, um, a purple square, and an orange square. And then we're just going to label those metals, non-metals, and metalloids, okay? And again, if you need to pause this at any time, go ahead. So we need to be able to differentiate between the characteristics of metals, non-metals, and metalloids. So we are going to color their location on the periodic table with the correct color. So your metalloids are going to be orange. Your metalloids are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, um, and polonium. I actually forgot that one. I'll be sure to edit this later um, and add that on. Um, so these are solids. They are semiconductors. Um, physically, they have properties like metals, but then um, chemically, they have properties like non-metals. So they are metalloids. Your metals are going to be light blue. The metals are to the left of the metalloids on your periodic table. So as you colored your metalloids orange, you kind of created an almost diagonal line of the orange color. And then everything to the left of that is going to be blue or light blue for our metals. But be careful because remember, hydrogen is not a metal. And then finally, your non-metals are purple. And those are all going to be to the right of the metalloids, except for that hydrogen, okay, which is all the way over on the left at the top because hydrogen is number one. So metals, right, they're solids. They are good conductors. Non-metals are very poor conductors. Uh, they're going to usually be a gas um, or a dull kind of brittle type of solid. So your periodic table should look similar to this, except yours is actually colored in with a crayon or colored pencil. Here is my metalloid line, and I do have um, polonium colored orange, even though I forgot it on the earlier slide. So here's our line of metalloids that we colored. All of our metals, right, are to the left of that. So all of these have been colored blue, with the exception of hydrogen, which is not blue. And then all of our um, non-metals, right, are to the right of our metalloids, and they have been colored purple, right, including your hydrogen. Don't forget to color these two periods down here blue as well. These are um, metals. Um, if we look at their um, atomic number, right, they would fit, right, 57. Um, they fit right here in between kind of where this gap is, but... We, we did that because otherwise the periodic table would be super, super long. It wouldn't really fit on a piece of paper very well. So we just kind of uh, took those out and plopped them at the bottom. So your periodic table should look like mine, right? We labeled the period. We labeled the group. Uh, we, we named our groups. And now we have colored our metalloids, our metals, and our uh, non-metals. A little bit of extra information that we are going to add for a periodic table. Um, on my periodic table, um, I actually didn't use lithium. I use, sorry, I didn't use silicon. I used lithium because it is over on the left-hand side and there's a lot of extra space for me to write. But basically, we need to understand that this number at the top um, represents the atomic number. And your atomic number is the number of protons that are found in that element. The number below um, is your atomic mass. Okay, SI is the symbol that we use um, to represent the name of the element. So silicon gets the symbol SI. Um, most symbols make sense. You know, silicon starts with SI, so the symbol is SI but some of them do not. Um, for example, um, copper uh, symbol is CU, 
even though copper is spelled C-O-P-P-E-R. Um, a lot of that has to do with the original Latin names of the periodic table. So just be careful. So we've, we have labeled the atomic number, right, which is the number of protons, that's the number at the top, and the atomic mass, which is the number below the symbol. Okay. Um, and then your atomic mass okay, is going to be your protons plus your neutrons. Okay, so basically what that's going to look like on your periodic table is right here. This looks exactly like my notebook. So I drew an arrow right to the number three for lithium. That's my atomic number, which also represents the number of protons in the lithium element. The number below the lithium symbol, right? That's my atomic mass. Atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons together. So if my atomic number is three, that means there are three protons. But then my atomic mass, right, is 6.9, which I'm gonna round that up to seven. So three protons me and four neutrons to give me an atomic mass of seven, okay? And then just another helpful hint right here, the number of electrons will always be equal to the number of protons. So since lithium has three protons, it will have three electrons, okay? This is... If this is the final product for your periodic table of the elements, we have all of our, um, we have our periods labeled, uh, we have our group labeled, we have our groups named and numbered, right? One all the way to 18, alkali metals all the way down to our noble gases. Um, we have the table colored based on our metalloids, our metals, and our non-metals. So that is it for this activity. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Thanks.